Greetings, planty people, and welcome back to my jungle. So hello there, welcome back. If you didn't know me already, I am Jules and I have probably too many plants. So today's video is about popular and common house plants that I just don't have, don't want, for various reasons. Now, please do keep in mind, this is just my opinion. Everyone has their own tastes in plants and basically anything. So this isn't me giving anyone hate for their choice in plants. This is just a topic that I wanted to talk about. And if anything, I actually quite enjoy that we all have our different tastes in plants because I love seeing everyone's plant collections and what I have and what they don't have. Do you know what I mean? I, th I just think it's quite interesting. So I've got a big coffee stained list here. Let's get going. So the first common house plant that I have never actually owned or would want to own at the moment is basically any type of large palm. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the look of the palm because I just love how they make a, you feel a bit tropical and it makes you feel like you're on holiday. <laughs> but my issue is I quite simply do not have the room. Eventually when I move out I will definitely probably get myself a palm because they're super easy, super easy to find. They're not usually too expensive unless you get a huge one and you know that would be a bit more expensive, but I don't know. I just, it's not feasible at the moment. I've had a Hawaiian palm a long time ago. It got so badly infested with spider mites. I'm a little bit worried to try ever again. And they're actually quite hard to find because they are, I think, endangered or almost extinct in the wild. And apparently it's because there needs to be a certain type of moth to pollinate it. And that moth is extinct, which is really sad but anyway i'm rambling yeah i'd probably get myself a kentia something kind of one of those fan looking ones eventually they're just super cute super simplistic i won't have one for a good a good while but i don't hate them at all when i see one in fact i go oh that's nice <laughs> okay so next one might ruffle some feathers keep in mind this is just my opinion if you have one you go girl, you do your thing, live your best planty life, that's totally fine. <laughs> crouton, which I also call a crouton. These guys, oh, they are divas. <laughs> These guys love a really, really bright spot, but they also don't like to dry out too much. So if you're having it in a bright spot, that will lead to it drying out quite quickly, right? So if you do have a croton, you have to stay completely on the ball with these guys. And I've got too many plants to be worrying about that. Do you know what I mean? So if you miss one watering and it dries out probably about 70%, it will just drop its leaves. It will go. And then you try and perk it up and it will just like drop its leaves and it's just a stick in a pot. Also, they are spider mite magnets don't know why spider mites like certain plants more than others like my el choco for example that one ugh, i've had to treat that one so many times and my varicosin but i don't know why they love croton so much so also i'm just not a big fan of the colors um i'm not a red i know right i know i have orangey hair but i'm not a fan of kind of red plants i don't know why i think it just doesn't go with my vibe I don't know. I love orange, but I'm not a big red person. You can get kind of, you can get ones that look a bit more yellow, get ones that are speckly, some curly. There are so many different types of croton, but I'm just not a big fan. Yeah, it's just one of those plants that I appreciate it. And if someone has it and they love it, I'm happy for them, but I'm just, I'm just not a big fan. It's one of those plants, it's like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it which is totally fine. I have a few plants that a lot of people don't like. For example, Begonia ferox freaks a lot of my friends out and that's totally fine. It is a weird one. <laughs> okay, so the next one, peace lily. Now, most people, even people that aren't into plants have heard of a peace lily. They are one of those classic plants that you might see in your grandparents' house or you had while you were growing up. I think my mum had one years ago I, I barely remember but i work in a plant shop right very on brand and the amount of customers that come in they're like help <laughs> my peace lily it's just ugh. they are thirsty kirsties and if you overwater them then they just rot it's finding the balance of them is just ugh. as soon as they get thirsty 
all of their leaves drop and if you didn't know that you probably think oh my gosh this is the end this plant is going to be in the compost bin but when you water it again it does perk up but it is just a bit worrying really and I'm, <laughs> I'm too anxious to have a plant like that really same goes for phytonia they are exactly the same the only phytonia i have are ones in my terrariums so they like it in a terrarium but not as a normal plant i think peace lilies are beautiful that i think they look really elegant they look really nice just in general when i see one but i also think oh that's a lot of work for just one plant do you know what i mean some people find them quite easy but from my experience from just tending to them in shops and all the complaints and help i've had to give they're just not worth it for me maybe in the future i'll never say never i mean the variegated one's pretty cute but i've never had the urge to actually get one it's more like oh that's cool anyway you know okay dracaena this is another classic that you see probably in the corner of an office or just in a shop somewhere they are very easy actually they only need watering like once a month a nice bright corner though for me i'm just not i just don't really want to get one and the reason being they're just so slow they just don't do it for me i'm more into leafy plants as well and yes they do have leaves but not the vibe i'm going for if that makes sense and they can get pretty big i've never seen a dracaena and go oh i kind of want one of those i've just seen it and go oh that's a cool plant that looks healthy good job but I just, i'm just not into it they are perfect though if you're a person that has a nice sunny spot and you don't want to worry about the plant too much if you just wanted like one plant in the corner perfect get yourself a dracaena they are super low maintenance just bear in mind they are very slow growing i'd say they're probably slower than a snake plant and that's slow next one is the chiflera yeah so chiflera also known as the umbrella tree or umbrella plant is one of those plants that i do actually believe is very gorgeous um i've actually seen them like growing outside when i went to greece and i was like whoa it was growing all up a house and i was I was very impressed i'm not gonna lie whenever i see a house plant outdoors obsessed anyway these guys i don't really have a problem with they tend to be a bit thirsty and if they dry out too much all their little leaves fall off but i do love when you get new growth with them they have like little hands i think it's really cute but it's, it's one of those plants where i appreciate it i like it but i just don't want it i'm at that point where i have so many plants that i've i really need to really want the plant do you know what i mean because i'd have to kind of shuffle everything around find the perfect spot but yeah never say never if i eventually have more room maybe i think they're beautiful um i'd probably get the plain green one i'm not as obsessed with the yellow variegated one but i think they're beautiful they're just not for me at this moment but if you have one slay <laughs> my legs are going dead I feel like I've got TV static in my feet. <laughs> okay, next one. This is quite a common one for people to not like. So the dreaded fiddle leaf fig. So I was actually given one by my friend years ago, probably like five years ago because she was moving house and she didn't have the room for it. And it was one about this tall. And usually when you see them in shops, they're like touching the ceiling. But this one I thought, okay, it's small. I'm just getting into plants so i'm trying to figure out my tastes in plants anyway so let's try it out <sighs> that plant was hard work i'm telling you so it needs a very bright spot a lot of information on the internet telling you about this plant says it needs like a bright and direct i'd honestly stick it in a window those guys crave the sunlight and if you put it in a dark corner it'll just drop all its leaves and it'll just be a stick if you underwater it oh it'll also drop its leaves but also I've, i noticed that if you're a little bit inconsistent with watering it so if you let it dry a little bit too much and then you water it again you get all these kind of like orange speckles on it maybe it's edema like when the little water cells burst in the leaf i don't know i'm not a scientist but oh, it was just getting really gross looking and i was just i was just like uh it was just one of those plants that i was actually kind of waiting for it to die it lasted longer than i thought it would but then it got spider mites that i couldn't be bothered anymore so 
R.I.P. Now I actually do think they are stunning. Like when you see a huge leafy one in like the corner of a cafe, they're always in a cafe. I think they are gorgeous and I'm like, props to you for keeping that alive. <laughs> but I saw like a proper tree of it in Madeira, like a full blown tree. And I was like, wow, that is gorgeous. <laughs> and it really put my tiny little diseased one to shame. So let me know what your experience is with a fiddle leaf fig because fiddle, is actually named they are fiddly plants next one i did actually own and that's a spider plant and i don't know i just not, i'm just not drawn to them it was one of those plants i had years ago that was just knocking about the house that my parents had i gave it a repot and it was doing pretty well and i just got bored of it it kept giving me loads of babies so i kept just kind of passing on all these little babies to everyone and even they were getting sick of them they're a cute plant just to have in the corner you know like quite a bright spot I found. They're non-toxic to pets, but they do have a mildly, what's the word I'm looking for? Hallucinogenic quality to them. So if your cat's nibbling it quite a lot, it's having a good time. <laughs> They're excellent in a bathroom. They're one of those plants that a lot of people's grandmas have or grandparents. They used to be trendy back a day and they're still quite trendy now, to be honest, but I don't know. I'm just not a big fan. I used to have a little, just um, a green one. That was cool. But the one I do actually really like is the orange one and it's more of an uncommon one to find. It has little orange stems and then it goes kind of like to green and it's got thicker leaves. That one's gorgeous. I'm a big fan of that one to be fair. But the original one, nah, probably never actually. I don't know. I just don't have the room. <laughs> Last but not least, English ivy. Now this is probably the only non-tropical plant on this list, but I see it a lot in garden centres and plant shops and I... <laughs> For some reason, they grow insanely easy outside. They're actually very invasive. They grow everywhere, of trees, of fences, of walls, along the floor. But inside, whoa, those guys just want to die. They crave spider mites, so spider mites crawl upon them. If you let it dry out just a little bit, it shrivels up. And they like quite a bright spot. I'd say medium to indirect but they're just, it's not worth it. Plus, if you wanted to buy one, just go outside and chop some off a wall because it's everywhere, everywhere. I don't know if it grows in like the States or in America and stuff, but if you come to England, it's everywhere. So if you've kept one of those alive, props to you because that is pretty hard to do. Okay, I think that's everything on my list. So let me know if you have any experience with these and if there are any plants that you would add to this list. I'm keen to know. So I'll leave all my social medias down below. I'm very active on Instagram and TikTok. So if you wanted to see me talk on other platforms, head that way, it's down below. I also have a 10% off grow gang. If you're interested in having some ambient lighting for your plants and you want them to grow fast, I have three. So <laughs> I'm clearly a fan. I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a lovely day, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Bye-bye.